channel if you are just stopping by for the first time hello my name is vicky and welcome to a florida friday video where we bring all the florida goodness onto your friday nights hopefully yay so on today's vlog i am going to be talking about character dining so i'm going to be ranking all of our character dining experiences that we have had over the many years that we've been going to Walt disney world now so yeah that's what i'm doing today all our ones that we've done i'm just going to rank them before we get going let's get a few things out of the way first of all if you are one of those people who believes that childless millennials i.e me and my husband shouldn't be going to Walt disney world because we spoil the magic for everyone else and it should be just for families this is not the channel for you don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out bye felicia are they gone yeah good right <laughs> next all these are my own opinions okay everyone is entitled to them we know some people don't always like them but these are my own opinions based on my own experiences so i'm gonna say this right now if you have any of these restaurants booked any of these dining experiences booked and i maybe say something not so good about it don't let that put you off this is a snapshot this is just what happened to me on that particular day with those particular cast members those particular characters i could have gone back the next day and had a completely different experience so this is just based on that one experience so don't let anything put you off what you've already got planned i enjoyed all of these experiences there were just some that i enjoyed better and lastly as i'm only talking about things that i've done i'm not going to be talking about every character meal that is out there because I haven't done them all, so I'm not going to be talking about Acker Shoes, Artist Point, Cape May Cafe, Hollywood and Dine. I think that's it. I think those are the only ones we haven't done, so I'm going to be talking about all the others. So, with all the disclaimers and red tape and rubbish out the way, let's get going with my ranked dining experiences of the character variety. Can you tell it's been ages since I've done a vlog like this? So let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So at number eight, because we've done eight, eight, I can't, eight, eight in total. Um, <laughs> at the bottom of our list is probably going to be a bit of a shock to someone because I know to, well, to a lot of people, because I know so many people love this place. And it's like, when you think of character dining, it's one of the first ones that most people want to do and think about doing. And it is Chef Mickey's. Chef Mickey's is over in the Contemporary Resort. Um, it's, one of the only places you can meet the Fab Five during character. So you get Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Pluto and Goofy all in their chef's outfits looking very nice. It's a buffet, it's a serve yourself buffet. So it's one of the ones where you go up and you get your own food and you come back to your table and the characters come round. It's the standard buffet. I've only ever done the breakfast. So my experience is based on the breakfast. They do breakfast, they do like a brunchy thing, lunch and dinner. Um, I've only ever done the breakfast so it's the same kind of meal that you'll get at any of these kind of buffets it's all very similar you've got the Mickey waffles you've got sausage bacon eggs some fruits some pastries pancakes a bucket load of syrup it's all very standard the food at most of the character buffets is the same the reason I've put this at the bottom is because our experience there wasn't fantastic the servers that we had seemed to kind of just ignore us we had to ask three times we brought a, cup, a pot of coffee everyone around us was being offered jugs of juice we didn't get that the whole time and the characters just passed us by we literally had to grab them to come and see us i don't know if it was because we were just two adults two childless males but we have paid to come to a character meal we know we're coming to a character meal we want to meet the characters that's why you pay the money and this was back when we didn't use dining plans so we paid out of pocket for this and i think this was in 2015 so i can't really remember but i think it's about 40 to 50 dollars per person not including tip so it's a very pricey meal the food was okay there was nothing amazing about it it was a standard buffet breakfast the same that you can probably go and get at ponderosa for three dollars but you know they don't have mickey waffles i mean the character interaction when we did stop them was fine it was just annoying that we had to make the effort to go and grab them but it wasn't magical we didn't feel like they really cared that we were there at all um the servers just kind of were rude so yeah that is why that's a bomb don't get me wrong i would go back to chef mickey's 
but probably not for a while um it didn't stand out to me as somewhere that i'd want to go back every trip so coming in at number seven is going to be another very controversial one because i've had conversations with so many people about this restaurant uh it's over in animal kingdom and it is tusker house i was so excited to be eating at tusker house because everyone always goes on about it that it's their favorite character meal and they have to do it every time they go and it was such a letdown for me i don't know if it was because i built it up in my head no i didn't it, it's not that it was really bad <laughs> um, so there's only one reason that this isn't at the bottom and that's because of the the um the meats that they have but yeah so tusker house is at animal kingdom again it's a get up and get your own buffet uh we again went for breakfast uh, and you meet mickey daisy donald and goofy in this one all in there safari outfits again the great thing about character meals and i'll always advocate for character meals is you get to meet the characters without queuing up and generally they're in outfits you won't see them in anywhere else so yeah that is why it's good to do character meals but yeah that's why i like doing them so my one big thing about tusker house was the noise it was so loud where we were because you get split off into that it's like four or five different sort of smaller rooms that you get put in and we were sat our table was in between a group of about 13 on that side and about 20 on that side of us and we were kind of stuck in between these two massive groups and they were so loud so loud and then it doesn't help that they kind of all the characters give out like maracas and bells and things and all the kids parade around you yeah it was just very loud where we were really really loud so i couldn't really relax and enjoy my meal um the food was actually really good which is probably why this is not quite on the bottom um you know they have like specialist meats they have different variety of stuff that you don't get at other character meals so that's why the food was lovely like the food was great um the other big issue we had on this particular meal was goofy came round to us he signed our autograph book and then ran off before we had a chance to say can we get a photo or a cuddle um so i was a bit like oh okay bye goofy i was okay fair enough um and one of the servers behind us came home and was like oh did you want a photo with goofy i was like well obviously yes we've taken photos with all the other characters yes we would like a photo with goofy so she went back to the uh, person who was um minding goofy for the day a rather older lady and um she said oh these guys wanted a photo with goofy he just ran off and she went did they stand up and she was like well no i was like well they should have gotten up literally stood right behind me like i can hear every word you're saying um and i was just like wow okay we didn't stand up for any of the other characters by the way they all they came round to our table because we were you know we were eating they stood behind us so that we could have photos and have cuddles and stuff but apparently you have to stand up to get a photo with goofy i was not best pleased so then when goofy did come back it was really awkward uh, but yeah i was not pleased that's it was that woman that cast member that really just cemented it that i didn't want to ever go back to tusker house so i'm sure again this is just that one cast member on that one day maybe she was having a bad morning i don't know but it really put us off so that is why that's quite low down the list but again don't let it put you off if you've got tusker house but the food was great like the, the food was awesome and you know jungle juice what more do you need moving on up i've got heather small in my head now Moving on, moving on. Moving on up to number six. Um, this is over in the Epcot area, or the Boardwalk area, I should say. Uh, this is the Bon Voyage breakfast at Trattoria Al Forno. I think I've said that right. Apologies. I should know. I'm part Italian, but nah, don't speak the language. They only do breakfast at this location. It's only a character breakfast. The rest of the meals, the lunch and the dinner is just normal normal dining here you get to meet flynn rider ariel rapunzel obviously flynn rider rapunzel and prince eric so this is a great one if you've got kids who really love tangled tangled is like one of my favorite disney films ever i think it's epic so much better than frozen don't at me but yeah it's a great place to meet those characters you don't really see flynn out and about i mean you can meet rapunzel certain places but you don't get to see Flynn so everyone loves a bit of the smolder so yeah I was really excited for this one overall this meal was really really good I was really happy with it 
Um, even though I find face characters a little bit weird, so like I'm talking the princes and the princesses, it's always a little bit more awkward making conversation with them because they they talk at you. Whereas, you know, when you're meeting other characters, they just kind of nod along. You can say whatever you want to them and it's fine. Someone's phoning me. Bear with me. I can't remember what I was talking about, so I'm just going to carry on from where I was. That was Rich on the phone. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a great one to meet those kind of characters. Um, the food is a, um, it's like an a la carte menu, so you pick stuff off the menu. It's not a buffet. You do get a frying pan of pastries, which was my favourite thing of the meal to start with. So it's got like some muffins, it's got like the sun in a pastry, which was oh, so good. Um, yeah, and you get a selection. If you're on the dining plan as well, I should say with all of this, all of these currently that I've said are one table service credit. I should have probably mentioned that. Uh, one table service credit and you do get an alcoholic beverage included as well. So I had a nice, I think I had like an espresso martini at like nine o'clock in the morning at this one. It was lovely. The only reason this one isn't higher up the list, the food for me was a little bit finickety, if that makes sense. I'm a pretty fussy eater. And I thought I'd try something really adventurous and it was minging. I had like the under the sea eggs or something like that, which was like poached eggs in some weird like tomato sauce with like polenta. And yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. That's my own fault for trying something different, <laughs> which I just didn't like and I didn't really eat. Um, but overall, it was a really nice experience. But again, like I've said, characters, face characters for me is always a bit awkward. And if they're not the greatest of actors, hashtag spoiling the magic it could be really awkward and our prince eric was a bit vanilla let's just say that but then prince eric is a pretty vanilla character anyway so maybe he was doing it perfectly well but it was it was a nice meal i enjoyed it um again it's not one i'd pay for out of pocket on the dining plan it's another great use of a dining credit so we're into the top five this is where it got quite difficult for me to actually separate them out because all these ones apart from like my top one or two all these ones were kind of around the same for me so in the magic kingdom i think it's an experience that everyone has to do at least once in their life and it is cinderella's royal table now we went there for breakfast it is a two two credit dining experience so if you're on the dining plan it's going to cost you two credits and they get taken off your uh, dining plan as soon as you book it so just be aware of that and if you are going to book it and pay out of pocket you have to pay for it as soon as you book it because it is very popular it's a very hard one to get i was really excited for this because obviously you're eating inside the castle i'm not that bothered about princesses like the princesses don't do it for me i just wanted to be inside the castle and have breakfast so yeah we went for breakfast and again it's similar to trattoria or fauna it's a la carte you pick what you want you get a tray of pastries to start with little cinnamon whirls muffins you know standard and then you get to pick your meal I think I went for like the royal breakfast, which was like sausages, eggs, a bit of bacon, some breakfast potatoes, and then we have mimosas. I would not pay for this restaurant. It was a great experience. The princesses were all lovely. It's a beautiful restaurant with a beautiful view. Um, it's a magical experience, especially if you've got kids. It really is amazing. And I think everyone should do it once, but I would not pay for it. Mm -mm. Using a dining plan, if you've got the free dining plan especially, is I would say, yes, do it. Um, but I would never pay for it because it's really expensive for what you get. I mean, my breakfast was literally like two sausages. Like my plate was huge, but the food on it was very sparse. It wasn't, it, it wasn't worth what you would have paid for it. Cause I think it's about like 60 to $70 for an adult just for breakfast. It's not worth that. It's a great experience though. Like I've said, you get some freebies. Which I've actually got up here. So yeah, the girls get a little Cinderella's roll table wand and the boys get a little sword. Although I'm sure if your little boy wanted a wand, they'd give him one. And if your little girl wanted a sword, they'd give him one as well. Love is love. So yeah, I wouldn't, like I said, wouldn't pay for it, but a great experience and I really, really enjoyed it. And I'd definitely go back there again if I was on a dining plan and if I was on a free dining plan, definitely. The princesses you can meet in Cinderella's Royal Table do vary, but you generally get, you'll always get Cinderella. You get to meet her before you go up to dining. Um, you can meet, it's they rotate, but it's Ariel, Jasmine, Snow White, uh, Sleeping Beauty. 
yeah that's it i think they kind of all rotate amongst themselves sometimes you get belle but not so much now i don't think because she's in the enchanted towers but yeah those are the ones that you generally get to meet moving on then to number four and we're staying in the magic kingdom for this one and we are going over to the crystal palace for a friendship day celebration Yes, this is, um, again, a serve yourself buffet. They do do breakfast, lunch and dinner. We went for breakfast um, and it's same kind of food. Very standard Mickey waffles, breakfast potatoes, bacon, sausages, omelettes, all that kind of good stuff. And here you get to meet the characters of Hundred Acre Wood. So you have Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Tigger and Eeyore. Oh, I love Eeyore. I loved this meal. It was so good. Again, the food was nothing to shout about, but the interactions with the characters was great. And also in this restaurant, I didn't feel like you were as penned in as you do in some of the others. Like Tusker House felt very crowded. Chef Mickey's felt very crowded. This one felt a lot more spread out. You weren't quite as penned in by other families. And we also got to meet most of the characters a couple of times on this one. And they also do a cute little parade with the kids as well, which most of the restaurants do at some point. But yeah, it was really cute. And Eeyore was my favourite character that day. He was so amazing to me. The whole thing was great. I absolutely loved it. So moving on to number three. We're in the top three. Are you excited? Oh, yes. Can you feel the tension building? Rich really disagrees with me on this one because he didn't rate it. But I loved it. It was one of my favourites, obviously, because it's in the top three and... Who cares what he says, this is all about me. Um, so this is in the Polynesian and it is of course Ohana. Oh, Ohana is one of those places that gets very, very mixed reviews. I loved it. I'd heard before we go that people say you get very, very rushed, that it's literally like sit down, character, 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 eat your food, go. I didn't feel like that at all. So we went for breakfast. Again, it's one of those places where character meals are only at breakfast. Lunch and dinner is just regular dining. It's back to being one table service credit. And yeah, you get to make Stitch. I mean, oh. So the characters here are Mickey and he wears a lovely Hawaiian shirt and a lei. You have Stitch and Lilo and then you also get to meet Pluto but he doesn't come round to the tables. He's at a separate kind of photo area. Um, so you can either do that while you're waiting for your table to be ready or once you've had your meal. So this is a buffet but it is a family style buffet. So this is where they bring you out like a skillet of food and then if you want more you just ask your waiter and they'll bring you another skillet or if you just want certain things they will bring you that. So it's like Mickey waffles, Stitch waffles, uh, you have the coconut pineapple bread I think it is, uh, also it comes out warm. You have bacon, just oh yeah, oh it was so good and Stitch juice which sounds so wrong, but tastes so good. <sighs> I love this meal. The character interaction was fantastic. Our servers were amazing. It's again, a one where you are a little bit penned in, like we were in a table of two, and then there was a table with two about that much gap in between the tables. So we were practically sitting together, but that's fine. I just give people a look and they know not to talk to me. But it was great, yeah, I loved, oh, Lilo was brilliant. She gave me some of the best interactions. So did Stitch. Uh, Mickey, not so much, but he was very busy. He's the boss, he doesn't have time. Um, and then we had a great meet and greet with, uh, with Pluto as well uh, before we had our table. We didn't feel rushed. Our table was ready really, really quickly. The food was lovely. I really enjoyed it. I don't know what Rich's problem was. I think he's just a bit grumpy. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. So that is why it is number three. Number two and number one. I really struggled with these. I was going backwards and forwards. With which one would be number one? Which one would be number two? Because I love them both. Um, but I am going with number two is Garden Grill. Garden Grill is located in Epcot. It is in the Land Pavilion and it is... Oh, one that we have to do pretty much every time we go now. Uh, we've done this restaurant twice. We did it first time in 2015 and we paid out of pocket for it. And then we did it again um, in 2018 um, when we used the dining plan. It's one table service credit and it's actually a revolving restaurant. It's amazing. Now, I don't know that put you off because we all know I don't like spinning, but it revolves very, very slowly and it's revolving around the living with the land attraction. So you can actually see into the living with the land attraction below you 
it's amazing and it's it's very very gentle you don't really notice that you are spinning but yeah this is another family style buffet they do a breakfast a lunch and dinner we have only ever been for dinner on this one so whew, something different we've had dinner at garden grill and it's kind of like a thanksgiving-y type feast it's the closest thing you're going to get in Walt Disney World to a roast dinner let me put it that way um it's Chippendale's harvest feast and again it's family style they bring you out a massive bowl of salad to start with and some amazing bread with like honey blossom butter which is just mwah, gorgeous and then you get a skillet and it does change seasonally but generally it is turkey beef um you sometimes get fish or sausage uh, you get mash you get fries or sometimes sweet potato fries we've had both um you get like mac and cheese for the kids and yeah just yummy and obviously whatever you want more of you just go and ask your server or they'll come around and say would you like some more of this would you like some more of that and then there is dessert and dessert is a strawberry shortcake and oh my goodness it is the best thing in the world ever oh I, I love that strawberry shortcake so much it's so good so yeah the food for this one is probably the best out of any of the character meals that i've done because it's really wholesome fresh food you know you get some veg there it's just so different to like you know if you're getting a bit bored of the chicken tenders and stuff and i know there's plenty of options for quick service food now at disney it's not like it was you know even five years ago there is so many better options but it's just a really nice break and it's a really relaxing meal. And the characters you get to meet here are Mickey in his awesome farmer's outfit, Pluto, and then Chip and Dale. And Chip and Dale, I'm sure most people agree with me, no matter where you meet them, they are one of the best characters to meet ever. You always get so much good interaction from Chip and Dale and I don't think I've ever had a bad meet and greet. But again, this is just a really, really nice meal and I cannot recommend it enough. Yeah, big thumbs up for Garden Grill. So we are at number one. And if you've been paying attention and you remember the ones I said at the start that I weren't going to be talking about, I was really bad English, that I wasn't going to be talking about, then you should have figured out what my number one is if you're that clued up on character dining experiences at Walt Disney World. But my number one, it's in the Grand Floridian and it is 1900 Park Fair. Oh. I was, this was one that I booked, uh, again it's one uh, table service credit, um, I booked this just because I wanted to throw another character meal in, um, I wasn't really that bothered about doing it when I booked it, but I'm so glad I did and it's, it's the only one that we have plans to go back to on our next trip because we're going to try a few different places but it's the only one that we really want to go back to. So they do a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner. It is a serve yourself buffet. We went for breakfast. Now this is important because the characters change here. So if you go for breakfast, you generally get Tigger, Winnie the Pooh, Mary Poppins, Alice, sometimes the Mad Hatter. We didn't get the Mad Hatter, um, but you do get the Mad Hatter sometimes. We also have Piglet, but uh, Piglet wasn't meeting at tables. She was in a separate area. He or she, I'm never quite sure with Piglet. Piglet was in a separate area. <laughs> um, uh, so you could have a photo as you left the restaurant with Piglet. If you go for, I'm not sure if it's lunch and dinner or if it's just dinner, um, you get a very different experience. You get Cinderella, Prince Charming, Lady Tremaine, and the Ugly Stepsisters, uh, uh, Gisella and Grisabella, I think. I, can't, I know it's Gisella, and I can't think what the other one's name is. Let's just call her Felicia. Um, but they're who you get. And so I really want to try dinner here because they're like, you don't get to meet Lady Tremaine and the Ugly Stepsisters unless you happen to grab them while they're running around um, fancy land. You don't see them very often. So it's a great opportunity to meet some kind of rare characters and have some really good interaction with them. So when we went for breakfast, again, it's a go up and help yourself buffet very similar food the only there's a few different items here so you get more kind of like you get uh, eggs benedict eggs royale um you get a strawberry soup which sounds weird but was actually very very tasty it's a very small restaurant it's it's quite petite but i love the theming you know you have like the carousel horses you have cinderella's carriage like like mini carriage in the start and her shoe and stuff it's a beautiful restaurant uh, you're not again penned in to each other like you are in some of the other 
great interaction from the characters the food even though it was just the standard buffet food it was slightly elevated and it was so good um yeah i i am an hour between this and garden grill because i love them both but this one just pipped it the atmosphere the characters the food the slightly posher food everything about it was just magical and i can't recommend it enough to go to the 900 part fair it's just I mean the Grand Floridian, just to be in the Grand Floridian itself is amazing, it's such a beautiful resort, it's so grand, everything about it just screams class and this restaurant and experience was the same. We got seated quickly, we didn't have to wait, we weren't rushed, again we saw the characters multiple times, yeah loved it, loved it, loved it. So that is it for my ranking of all our character dining experiences that we have experienced. I wonder how many times I've said that in this vlog no who cares so let me know in the comments down below what you think of my rankings what would be your number one character dining experience and what ones that we maybe haven't done can you recommend because obviously we are going to Walt Disney World in 2020 in September for eight days then we just do Disney before we go on our Disney cruise. Have I mentioned we're going on a cruise? Well, we are and I'm so excited. So yeah, let me know what you think we should try next before it gets to our 180 days and we have to book those reservations. Woo, furiously, I can feel my blood pumping already, stressing, thinking about ADR day, but it's still ages away. But yeah, let me know what you think. Please give me a thumbs up, guys. Hit that like button down below if you have enjoyed this video. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing to my Diddy little channel. Always greatly appreciated to have you along. And as always, the most important thing. Have a magical day, guys, and I will see you really soon. Bye!